Well, quite in setting up, I'll just say that um, we've given this about a half an hour, uh, just for time. And um, Clint, how long do you think your presentation is going to last? About 15 minutes or so? I'll try to keep that. Yeah. Okay. And then 15 minutes for um, questions and discussion. And uh, for anybody that wasn't in the room before, um, We'll introduce ourselves again. I'm Al Avalon. I'm the chairman of the board. And the two people talking down here at this end are Sue Zacharias and Willie Chalabash. And David Rose. Steve Allen. Great job. All right. Clint, you're all set up. So let's let the show begin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Clint Shuckle. I serve as chair of the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee. And I'm here tonight because the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee has proposed some intersection improvements in Casey's Corner, and as part of those improvements requires alterations to stone walls. And as this is a scenic road, um, we have a similar situation as the project that you just, just saw. And I think we should give bonus points tonight to anyone who can use stone wall as a verb or adjective. <laughs> um, first, before I get started, I want to uh, quickly give a shameless plug for a couple other things the committee is asking for at town meeting. I'll be very quick with those. Um, I think I need to spend a couple minutes on why the committee thinks a roundabout is a good idea at this location, because if you, the planning board, don't agree or see any of the benefits, then you probably don't see any benefits to changing stone walls and moving driveways either. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the what we feel are context-sensitive design features of the roundabout to make it fit into a historic and rural area. Um, I will then talk about quickly about uh, landscape driveway locations that were studied, and finally, what type of alterations would be required. And I'm going to try to also leave a few minutes for the landscape folks to talk, because we have um, tried to coordinate through this process, although we haven't rehearsed anything tonight. I have no idea what they're going to say, so I'll, I'll look forward to, uh, to their comments. Hopefully they complement mine, not uh, contradict. The, uh, the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee has three different requests before town meeting. The first is a, a request for design funds, um, really just down the street from this project that you just saw, uh, looking at parking and traffic issues with the high school, middle school campus. That will just be a design funds request. The committee also has a request for sidewalk funding through the CPA. Uh, it will be a, uh, a one-year I'm sorry, it's a one-year approval for one mile of sidewalk. The, uh, the committee has proposed through a master plan of four miles of new sidewalk, so we would likely see, if it's successful, uh, that request again for the next few years. And then finally, the roundabout uh, construction. I also just want to briefly mention that the committee has put forth a, a capital plan so that we're trying to look forward over the next five years over different requests that we might be making and, and try to plan for some of those financially and anticipate them. The, uh, the requests that we have before town meeting and, and in the CIP are, are all over town, although we have prioritized our requests at school locations first. And the yellow dot you see is the project that you just talked about at Wellesley and South Street. And, and some people say, well, why isn't this roundabout, why aren't you going for state funding? And the reason is that yellow dot, is that's a two and a half to $3 million project, and we're trying to get the state to pay for that one because it's three to four times the cost that a roundabout would be. And similar to decisions that were made relative to the science wing and the field school. The field school is a bigger project, so that's the, the project that the town went for for state funding. Again, I'd like to take a couple minutes just to review why the, the committee has reached the conclusion it has, and also to tell you that this project is being finally final review by the town. It's going out to bid in the next couple of weeks, and there will be bids in hand for town meeting, so that there will be a construction cost, a hard construction cost for town meeting to evaluate, not just the proposed estimate or concept estimate. If it was approved, it would go into construction in July and be completed by next spring. The primary goal of this project is to reduce traffic speeds at a very critical location in town. You can see that there are four, uh, four access points in this area where traffic comes to a stop, at Alphabet Lane, at the Case House Driveway, at Wellesley Street, and then at the Landsake Driveway, which is the arrow on the right side of the screen. And typically now, you and we've measured the speeds of traffic 
uh, upper 30s, low 40s is, is the typical speed through there, the red arrow directions. So in each of those blue arrow directions, you have traffic at 40 miles an hour to either your left or your right or both. And the proposed roundabout intends to bring those speeds down. Uh, and not shown on this diagram is, is the intersection improvement proposed to the north, which is Wellesley Street at School Street. Um, I will show that in a few moments, but that, that's also uh, part of the project, so it's really a two intersection project. Faces Corner has had a police officer there for 15 years now, and it's been studied uh, in the late 90s by the state and then independently three times by the town over the last five years. And the conclusion of each study was that a roundabout was the best uh, solution, and this was close to going to town meeting a year ago, and the decision was to hold off and have it studied as part of the Case Campus Master Plan. That's been done over the last year as well. So a, a brief summary of the three studies that have been done, uh, the three firms and the years. Uh, the first, this first came about from the Landsake Driveway relocation, and then the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee, and then the Field School uh, Project. Each Again, different groups in the town, different consultants, ultimately all had reached the same conclusion in the end. The, the traffic has been counted and analyzed and simulated about every way possible at this location. If nothing else, I hope you will reach the conclusion that this thing has been studied as much as it can be studied and that it is ready for, for town meeting to, to say yes or no to. The, the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee look at a range of different ideas, different kinds of T intersections, different kinds of islands, and different shapes of roundabouts, and study the costs and the, the delay of traffic and the queuing of cars in each one. As part of the Case Campus, there was even a traffic signal studied at this location, but it wasn't seriously considered for primarily aesthetic reasons. Again, it's been studied as part of the Case Campus master planning work, and it was part of all the different alternatives that they looked at. How should Alphabet Lane flow? Where should driveways be? So it, it gets back to safety, which is really the, I think, the primary charge for the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee. There have been 15 crashes in the last three years at Cases Corner and Wellesley Street. Um, 40 in total, if you look at the roadways adjacent to the Case Campus, starting out at Maple Lane, wrapping around the campus, going down Wellesley Street at Alphabet Lane. The safety benefits of roundabouts are primarily related to reducing the severity of crashes because you don't have right angle crashes with one car trying to come out at a stop sign and another car at full speed. Everybody's brought down to a, a 20 mile an hour or so speed so that if you do have crashes, they're typically much less severe. The, the number of um, injuries that have happened at this location have been six over the last three years, so it's six out of 15 um, required. And I, I believe that the, the police consider an injury when a person um, is, I believe, taken in an ambulance. They may not be seriously hurt, but they might think that they, you know, they just want to get checked out by a doctor. So six, six injury crashes, and, and that is, the biggest benefit to roundabout is reducing the severity of crashes. But you also see a, an overall crash reduction of almost 40%. So um, these things are difficult to quantify the benefits of. Um, I believe the Finance Committee has said this doesn't have a great cost benefit. And I can't argue with that. Uh, it doesn't involve toll booths. There's not revenue that, that, that comes from this. It's, it's, it's uh, a quality of life, uh, I think, improvement. Some of the uh, concerns are if you make this intersection flow better, will it cause more cars to cut through from places outside Weston? The committee doesn't believe so because the gateways to this location are basically at capacity already. And even the intersection improvement we talked about in this committee a few minutes ago because they're adding phases to the lights, because they're adding crosswalks and, and pedestrian crossing time, uh, that's not going to process a lot more cars than it does today. Hopefully it will process them more safely and, and providing the turning arrows and that type of thing. So the, 
the six basic reasons that the, the committee, Traffic and Sidewalk Committee, has recommended roundabout here. It's number one, safety, that it provides traffic calming 24 7. I hope also another, hopefully, a, a take home point is that we're not trying to solve just a 45 minute problem in the morning. Of, everybody's familiar with how traffic backs up on Wellesley Street, it's, it's broader and bigger than that. The lowering of speeds, creating a, a safer location for pedestrians to cross, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Again, we don't believe this is going to cause more cut through traffic. And finally, we think we've come up with a design that's respectful of its location and time. And the committee also believes that the town has already invested quite a large sum of money in this area, but never looked at how to connect the dots in terms of if Case Estates is ever acquired by the town or becomes open space, there's really not a good way to get there from the Case campus or from Landsake. There's no, there's no safe crossing point. And likewise, there's no safe crossing point from Case campus to Landsake as well. Extensive study, three consultants came to the same conclusion. We have appropriated the design money. We know what, we will know what the cost is going to be in the next six weeks. So talking about the project briefly, um, I think you probably are, are familiar with the how a roundabout works. Uh, it's a yield condition. You yield to traffic, you yield to traffic already in the roundabout, so you're looking to your left as you enter. The red ring would not be uh, brick. It would more likely be a cobblestone type uh, material. I'll show you a sample in a moment. The existing driveway location is shown on the diagram. It's the dotted line. And it's currently proposed that that would become the crosswalk location. The, the safest point to put a crosswalk at a roundabout is where, right at the circle, where the traffic is the slowest and you can give people the opportunity to have a refuge across one street at a time at the slowest point. And this is the first time you, you're seeing the intersection to the right, which is Wellesley Street at School Street. That is a, a, a right a narrowing of the intersection and trying to put it at a right angle so that it slows cars both turning right, going north to Route 20. It also gives you a more comfortable look left and look right as you're trying to get out onto Wellesley Street and makes the crosswalk there much shorter and more visible. So again, zooming in on the island. And then the intersection. So the, the concept, context sensitive design features, there's a reduced number of signs. There's a 12% reduction in pavement area. There are no changes to street lights or utility poles. The landscape access is the only impact to stone walls. There's no other relocation or moving of walls. Everything happens within the right of way, within the, the sidewalk and, and wall limits. We're using asphalt sidewalks and asphalt curbing, except the islands, to match what's out there. And that outer circle would be a cobblestone treatment, and that is for tractor trailers so that they can get around the roundabout, but buses and every other car won't be driving on it. Hopefully, they want to. They're paying attention. And in the landscaping, uh, we have an allowance for it in the contract. It's not extensive because this isn't a formal garden type area. But the intent is we've met with the architect that's looking at some of the proposals for the case campus and the space that Field School will be vacating, and how that's going to be a, an arboretum type uh, look if approved uh, for funding. So this would match that. It, again, it's not it's not a formal garden type look. Would be roughly where the island is now. Yes, I, uh, you'll see that in, in just a moment. This is uh, the field school campus with the uh, what would be done under the state funding, and these are some of the uh, ideas proposed as part of the Case Campus Master Plan. I think the biggest impact would be the driveway now that goes to the Case House. If that were connected to the rec center, the proposal is that be a one way in and that the out would be at Alphabet Lane. Because there's concern that connecting the parking lot to the rest of the campus would add a lot of traffic and you're not trying to avoid a, a high volume two way driveway in the roundabout, which is one of the reasons that the Landsake driveway was proposed to move away. So this is the existing condition where the the driveway comes out now right uh, across from the break in the island. If 
the roundabout is approved at town meeting. Um, this would be what it would look like in terms of the, the proposed driveway uh, relocation and the, the narrowing of the existing break to, to make the, uh, the walking path connection. And this shows you a little bit about where the islands are now, which is the blue, and, and those how those spaces or how the existing kind of see the existing island. The, the intent is to try to save that largest tree that's in the middle. Um, we're not making any promises, given all the digging that has to happen around it. But the intent is to try to to preserve that tree. And you can see the island is kind of located, so that hopefully can happen. And you also can see the green space to the lower left, I'm sorry, the lower right of the screen that would be created by squaring up the intersection of Wellesley Street and <coughs> School Street. Sign removals, uh, 25 out there now, 18 proposed. Eight, the 18 in black and the 25 in red. And this gives you some a sample of some of the, uh, on the right really, not, the, not so much the left, but the, different types of cobblestones or, or, or uh, stamped concrete that's being looked at for that red inner circle. Uh, the, the crosswalk on the left, the idea was not to use a stamped brick crosswalk because that doesn't match anything else in the town. It would just be the asphalt and the white lines. There are meetings coming up if you want to learn more. There's also quite a bit of information on the roundabout on the website, including a very, I think, useful, <coughs> frequently asked questions about uh, how roundabouts work and their benefits. And now I want to move to the last two points quickly um, relative to the locations that were studied and the alter stonewall alterations. So again, this is the plan, and I can use leave this up on the screen for reference as we start our discussion. So the, the first thing to talk about is that the existing um, driveway location, if the planning board was to say no to this idea, I would think the most likely casualty would be that crosswalk. Uh, we would have to look at a single break for the driveway location um, and probably ask for that break to be relocated either to a point in so that the roundabout came into the circle or that it was I'm sorry, the driveway came in directly into the circle or to its proposed location. So I thought that question might come up, what if, what if you don't approve? The area between Ash, along Newton Street, between the, the proposed roundabout and Ash Street, which Ash Street is the road going up to the upper left. Uh, a couple other driveway locations were studied by the consultants. They looked at site distance, um, the distance that you have to be able to see a car so that they, the car has time to stop and avoid you if you've pulled out into the road. And the consultant didn't believe that either of these two proposed driveway locations had enough sight distance given the curvature of the road and, and the, the top of the hill there at Ash Street. So we did, did look at locations further to the south as possible driveway locations and, and the consultant didn't feel that there was enough sight distance. So that was, first drawing was the uh, driveway location across across from Ash, and then the second was closer to the roundabout. So this is the existing conditions, and the yellow line is where there are stone walls today. The existing landscape driveway is to the left of the screen. Uh, the center, center to the right side of the screen, it's all referred to that as the Mosher Danforth driveway. And that's going to be very much discussed few moments, um, hopefully as, as my friends from Landscape, Landsake um, elaborate on some of their operational needs. And you can see that the uh, property line, private property, but that is currently still required by Landsake for their deliveries. So you've got, they have a need for very infrequent but tractor trailer access to Landsake and that currently, currently still occurs across the private driveway. So. If Landsake were to uh, be able to take full advantage of this proposal, I would expect they'd like to be able to eliminate that requirement. So that shows a movement of a tractor trailer from the south and from the north. And you can see because you have a virtual sea of pavement there, the tractor trailer has a lot of maneuverability room they wouldn't necessarily have 
the driveway was, was moved to the south. And the other view. So I, I was um, fortunate enough to get some pictures for you. This is the existing Landsake driveway now, across from the island, existing islands. And you will see cones, traffic cones, in the next uh, couple of photos to give you a sense for where this driveway location would be. And there's also a, um, just to the right of the arrow on the right, there's a, a catch basin, about maybe six, eight feet away. So if you're out there, go about six, eight feet from where the catch basin is, and the next 35 feet will be the driveway break. And this is what it looks like directly across from the break, proposed break. And then now walking a little bit to the north, looking back toward the south. And the final photo, looking along the sidewalk to the south, So this is what the, the proposed wall opening at its current state would be 38 feet. And the primary reason for that is, again, the tractor trailer access and trying to eliminate the requirement for landscape to have to use a private driveway. The existing walkway location, which is on the left side of this, the existing driveway location, which is shown on the left side, has a 24-foot opening. That would be narrowed to five feet, just wide enough for the sidewalk access. So that if you look at it from a net, how much wall is removed, it's, it's just under 20 feet of wall. The wall opening, again, has been uh, primarily driven by the need to get a large truck into that drive. Now, Landsake will or the town at some point would have to look at a uh, gravel, some type of connector road that will go, you can see that the truck in the middle of the left side of the screen, that truck right now would be driving out in the middle of the field. So there would be, there would be a need for a, a small gravel driveway to connect to the existing land, lands, landscape driveway that is about where, right in this area, and then the existing driveway connects back to their uh, farm. So when, when we looked at driveway locations to the south of the roundabout, that made less sense to Landsake because they still had this delivery problem. And putting the driveway way at that end made an internal road even longer and greater and, and of more impact to their operations. So this would be the, the movement of a, of a tractor trailer coming from the south. And we've used the entire roadway. It swings completely over to the other curb. We believe that's acceptable to both narrow the proposed opening as much as possible and the fact that these deliveries are very infrequent so we're not expecting them to happen at 8.15 in the morning or 7.45 so that they're, again, to narrow that impact we're trying to use as much of the road for the truck to turn in. When infrequent, how, how often is it infrequent? Uh, once or twice a season, typically. So like two trucks a year? Uh, between two and four a year, depending. Of the large ones. Of the large ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get smaller fixed length delivery trucks all throughout the season. And school buses. And this is the, the school bus turning in. School bus or a, uh, a small fire truck. So we don't need those. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for the attention. We, I understand from being here before that breaking the stone wall is, is not certainly something that's ideal to the board, um, but I think it is, a, it is required from a safety point of view and from an access point of view that Landsake is, is a, an operating farm and if we want to have people both park for them to take deliveries and if you want it to be accessed on foot, uh, this is, I think, the, the only possible plan. I wish it were otherwise. I hope I've shown you that we did look at all the options carefully. We've talked with the abutters. We've tried to uh, account for Landsake's needs. And if you would, possibly give them a moment or two just to uh, describe their thoughts on this plan. And, um, thank you again. Um, you're from Landsake. I am. Yes, my name's Ed Barker. I'm the new executive director as of June 1st of last year. 
what would you like to say about what you're looking at? Well, I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts that we have about it. As an organization, uh, we're not uh, advocating one, to way, one way or the other for or against the roundabout, but we do have a few issues that we'd like to be considered in the process if, in fact, that does happen. Um, mostly they have to do with access. Obviously, we have an operating business that's taking place, and so any construction that takes place at the roundabout um, we need to make sure it doesn't impact our operating, our ability to operate since our driveway comes in and out of that specific point, um, which suggests to me that the decision about moving the driveway, if that happens, should be one of the first phase components of the program as opposed to later in the process. Um, the, the sizing is very much along the lines of, of uh, what Clint just um, described in the sense that we do have a need for regular deliveries of fixed length box trucks and school buses delivering children to our programs as that's becoming an increasingly part, important part of the program that we have at Lansing. Um, as we bring welcome groups from Weston schools and from other schools to, um, to the farm. Um, but we do receive um, at uh, certain times of the year uh, deliveries from um, tractor trailers or articulated trucks and so we will need to be able to get those onto the property. Um, as far, and therefore that sort of defines what, what appropriate size makes the most sense. As far as the um, location is concerned, um, we are open to that uh, driveway moving along the place essentially between the current uh, property line and the existing driveway spot. If there were one location that were better suited or another, I suspect that that is partially driven by the radius of, of trucks trying to get in and out of that location. So, um, you know, if, if I had my brothers, I'd move it further to the right, closer to the property line, simply because our farm road network is more towards the right-hand side of this screen here. And so as we are looking to be able to, in the future, um, connect in from one entry point to the road system within the campus um, and get our, our access, our regular access, um, off of the, of the driveway that the Danforth and the Mosers have so graciously allowed us to use for many years now, um, having that entrance point farther to the right, closer to the property line, certainly makes it easier um, to connect into those roads and, and probably will impact less on the, front, uh, on the front field there. Although I recognize that that is going to be, uh, unfortunately, I think a casualty in any, um, in any circumstance. Um, just a, a couple of additional um, things to consider. These are perhaps less for your jurisdiction than for, for those who are managing the project. Um, one is that dust is going to be a significant issue for us. Dust on the plants has a significant impact on their rate of growth and germination. And, and you know anybody who's picking your own tomatoes and getting a nice gritty uh, tomato is uh, probably not um, going to be excited about that. That front field is typically used for our pick your own um, crops, and so as a result, it's very important that dust management be something that, um, that the project managers take seriously. Um, we also request that decisions about timing and perhaps to a certain extent about placement of certain trees, for example, along that, um, along that stretch of Wellesley Street be something that we get the opportunity to weigh in on early enough uh, that we can tell somebody that a nice big tree that's going to go in that spot is going to cast significant shade onto our front field and therefore um, really impact the ability of that to function as a productive space. So um, we hope that um, as decisions get made about timing and sequencing that we be informed about that in the process. Um, and then finally, uh, um, you know, obviously uh, the driveway that is being closed um, to serve as a, as a walkway and the relocation of this other driveway will have some re-landscaping and other implications um, and we simply would like to make sure that those end up being a part of the overall project plan so that um, we can uh, restore, uh, to the extent possible, the places that are going to be green space and the, and the, um, and the areas that are going to be most impacted by this, by this project. Um, one of the things that, as, a, as a, an executive director of an organization that's dealing with over 1,900 children a year, um, as an individual, I'm very pleased with is that this project does have a significantly improved pedestrian access to the Lansing site 
in a way that provides a greater degree of security. And as we are deepening our relationships with the school and increasing the number of school kids that come to our program, um, that makes it much easier for me to sleep at night, uh, simply because the last thing in the world I want to find out about is that there's been some kind of a pedestrian accident with regard to kids coming to one of our programs, um, or adults for that matter. Um, but anyway, um, so long and short of it is, um, from our perspective, uh, the advantage, the, the second advantage of a wider wall cut um, beyond simply allowing the entrance of the articulated trucks is also that it makes that entry point a safer one for vehicles who are coming, that are coming in and out, because that's a two-way driveway. I don't know if any of you all have had the experience of trying to turn into or out of the landscape driveway at certain times of day, but it's a little hair-raising because it's a fairly narrow cut, and, as we're, and, and drivers are sticking them, their, their front ends fairly far out in order to be able to see around the wall. So as a result, you get people who are coming right close to each other in the process of trying to duck between oncoming traffic. Um, the advantage of a wider cut is there'll just be a wider margin for error in the course of regular um, daily operations there. So from those two stand, from those two perspectives, as you know, provided that this project goes forward, um, we are very much in favor of a wider cut, and, and um, we would like to consider it being as far to the right as possible. I've also told Clint and others that if you're looking for really good material to use in that roundabout central section, I got a lot of field rocks that I would be happy to donate to the project. So if you're looking to keep costs down on that roundabout, we certainly would be happy to help with uh, with building materials. Did you say you were looking, you, you'd prefer it farther to the right? Uh, as close as possible to the property line, simply because that makes it easier for us to go straight back to the uh, to the farm roads that are that are at the bottom, you know, towards the bottom of this picture. So is there a reason it's not farther to the right? I think that the consultant was trying to be sensitive to the adjacent abutters, uh, but operationally, safety-wise, there's no reason it couldn't be moved. Uh, it might not be a popular thing so with the so property owner right there to put it closer, but uh, so then it would it actually be fine either way. So that you have one going straight back and one going to the to the right. And the, uh, presumably the, the southwest. Yeah, presumably the uh, the driveway that connects into the um, to the farm roads would be uh, you know some kind of a gravel or other um, <coughs> surface that's not used on a regular basis by by public traffic. Um, and then I assume that the the driveway that would connect into our parking lot would be a similar kind of kind of surface to the to the stuff that's there now. Isn't it preferable to keep it as far from the roundabout as possible, so that moving it to the right somewhat is better? Well, you have an intersection on either side. Right. Right. So, but now it looks like it's closer to the roundabout. It it could be moved again. I think it was yeah. in part to try to give the the residential property there a little bit of a buffer zone. That's that's uh, you know how those decisions go. There are all kinds of for or against. Um, I mean, dragging it further to the right means you can bring the driveway across the front of the property further. Because mm -hmm. the, the the nice thing about the driveway, that the current driveway. I mean, operationally, internally, operationally, from landscape's ideal point of view, may not be. Uh, the best at the at the intersection with at Newton its current Street. location. Pardon? In its current location. In its current location, mm -hmm. because it's narrow and so. But I'm not sure whether people have been running into each other at that intersection. But um, it it works with the land pretty nicely. Though, and we've had this conversation on the planning. Well, this is at least the third time, maybe mm -hmm. the fourth time. We have gone through this, um, so we we know the pros and cons. We know all about this, the potential ac access points on the south and why they don't work. And the, uh, the police chief hates them. We, we've been we've been through all of it. Um, but our primary, my primary concern is to try to maintain as much as possible the viewscape in that area. And, and it worries me when you create that wide an opening in the stone wall. Um, 
because it, it's an interruption in that line that is so critical to the overall viewscape in that area. Especially if you consider that it's mostly for no more than four trucks a year. Um, I, I wonder about that, and I also wonder about the topographical disruptions that the driveway is going to create internally, because you've got to, now instead of running it over the topography, which is, you can just see the current driveway in the background there, it just runs right over the top of the land. This one is going to have to actually require some earth movement to make it work. And um, so now we're talking about not only the landscaping on the on the roadside, but also how to treat the the, land, the, the topographical changes internally to the to the site. It, it's a there are a number of considerations here that I think need at least a, a more detailed look to see what the implications are um, personally, just so that. We try to maintain this, I mean, one of Clint's um, strong points and selling points in his initial presentation was actually improving the, the sort of landscape features of this intersection. Um, and I subscribe to that. I think that it, that's a great goal. I, I, I just want to make sure that what, what we're proposing for the landscape entrance is consistent with that goal. And right now, I see a very wide opening, a very wide driveway for no more than four trucks a year, and maybe for to prevent nearsighted people from running into each other when they're trying to get on and off the property. But but balanced against that against that is the is the overall. Um, vision of that of that particular part of town, which is, I think, a, a critical um, representative part of town for, uh, it's the character, it's what defines the character of Weston, this, this intersection. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if you put it where it's being suggested, that driveway is going to be what you see for land sake. That's right. And that's going to go right across your productive uh, field. Well, but, but regardless, if the if the roundabout goes through, we're going to have to talk about a, a wall cut of some kind or another, right? Well, it may be an expansion of the current wall cut. It may be a small wall cut next to it for, for pedestrians. But again, for four trucks a, a year, and they have to be the big ones, they can't be like two small, you know, two well, I, smaller I, ones? I don't often have the ability to control how the deliveries come, and it's certainly less expensive for us to get one big truckload than it is to get several small truckloads. Well, but we're paying the price. Um, we, we, all, we, all those, we all pay those the price. Of price right? We all pay the price. They contribute to land sakes on a yearly basis and yes. for the last four years. That's correct. And, That's and correct. the town pays the price for some of the cost change mm -hmm. and also for the law, you know, the change. The change in that viewscape that, that Al was talking about, I think, very, very correctly. You know, so. I, I guess the, old, the issue I, I come up with, your, your points are absolutely valid and totally well taken. And one of the things that I'm pleased to hear you guys say back to me is that this location really does represent the heart of, of, what, of Weston, because I've been telling people that as I go out and talk to them about why it's important to support Lansing. So I'm glad to hear that we're, we're all sort of singing from the same songbook. And the issue for me is that I'm I'm perfectly happy with our with our driveway where it is. I do not feel strongly one way or the other as to whether the roundabout should happen or should not happen. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that if the roundabout does get approved, um, if the town chooses to move ahead with the round, roundabout, um, I would like to at least uh, uh, posit that we consider what do we do about that entryway and are there some small improvements we can make about the entryway as it's proposed here that would improve our ability to operate. Because you're absolutely right. If that driveway moves because the roundabout goes in, we have a driveway right across the front of our productive field. And from what I can tell, based on the presentations that were made and the comments that were made in the, uh, the meeting we had a little, a little while back with the, uh, was it the um, Joint Case Committee and Traffic and Sidewalk Committee, is that 
that was the one where the board of selectmen. So the board, that's it, board of selectmen meet committee. Um, basically made very clear to us that this is municipal property and, and rightly so. If the town makes the decision that this project is going to go through and that the driveway needs to move, the driveway will move. And, and I'm totally understanding of that and appreciative that that, that, that is what um, may need to happen. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly not advocating to put a driveway through the middle of what is currently my pick your own field. Um, I'm, I'm acknowledging, however, that in the event that this gets chosen or it gets approved, um, we, um, as, the, as the landowner who will be directly impacted by that, not the landowner, but the tenant, shall we say, who's been most directly impacted by that, there are some changes to that plan as currently proposed that would make an impact on the on the positive impact on the on the business that we have. But you but we speak for the town. Yes you do. And we can stipulate the opening. Um, and you as you pointed out and it's correct, you are the tenant. And so we have to balance the, the what we consider to be the overall interest of the town against what against the specific interests or at least expressed interests of the um, executive director of Landsake, and that's 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 going to be our role. We may not give you the really wide. I'm I'm well aware of that. I I felt like okay. it was important at least to make clear sort of. Al, as a member of the board, um, you should know that the board has gone over this. He's speaking for the board tonight. Oh. You know, you said the, the wishes of the executive director. All right. And is speaking for the, the board tonight. We believe we spent some time discussing what our position was. And, what our feeling is on this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, we, and obviously we can, we'll, we'll, we'll go with whatever the town says. We are tenants. Um, but just, if it's going to happen, we want it to I just, I just think you've got to think about this aesthetically. Honestly, Jonathan. This is going to have a big, the, 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 that, that driveway opening is going to have a big impact on what you look at. And don't, don't argue with me. Just, just, oh. just, just believe me. Well, I, I agree with, with you. I, I think the opening will control. have an effect, and cutting across the field will have an even bigger effect. Absolutely. Well, it's not Absolutely. only cutting across. So it's cutting sure through. Well, diagonal, 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 yeah, yeah, well, walk out there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, see I, now that you say it, I can picture this right. There's, a, there's right. a hump there. You're going to yeah. have to go right so through. I have a question regarding dealing with these four deliveries a year, mm -hmm. right? Have, have you looked? I mean, what? I mean, obviously, you must have looked at other options. Um, you know, a, a, a restricted easement for the current situation with the property owners, at least asking them if, they, if they'd be willing to go with that, with restrictions of four trucks a year, or um, having those deliveries, uh, uh, I don't know what it's delivery of, but, you know, at another, to another location, the, the DPW, you know, area, which mm -hmm. is, you know, gigantic and full of trucks, and then being able to ferry what you need over as you need it. Oh, I'm fine. Well, I mean, I appreciate that you're problem, I mean, just problem solving creatively around, mm -hmm. around the situation. Um, as my understanding is that the, the driveway cut on the Mosher Danforth driveway is actually narrower than our current driveway opening, um, which which does has in a couple of cases meant that that wall's been impacted by um, by trucks coming in and out. So obviously we want to minimize that uh, altogether. Um, and so I'm not sure that an easement necessarily for those kinds of deliveries is really going to solve the problem. Um, from the perspective of um, you know substitute locations or other things like that, we have done some of that in the past. Um, our ability to make that work is a function of uh, equipment and the nature of the delivery um, and the time of year. Um, oftentimes, the inefficiency that comes with that is such that it really um, negates the effectiveness of. Um, you know, having a secondary location um, simply because the process of moving back and forth in smaller vehicles. We don't have a truck big enough to sort of break that down into two loads, so it ends up being several but smaller I'm, loads. I'm not hearing from you that you, like, are very strongly in favor of, 
of this cut and then bringing your driveway through your production field? Well, we, we, are, we are going to have to make uh, some changes to right. our um, current access to the site regardless of whether this rotary goes through or not um, at some point in the future. Um, the Danforths and the Mosiers have been exceedingly generous over many years in allowing us to use their driveway to access the landscape field. Um, they um, have uh, very graciously indicated also that um, you know, there will come a time when um, we need to get out of that driveway. And in, um, you know, in respect for that, I, I feel it is important for us um, to start talking with you guys about an approach that's going to work so that we really can um, solve the problem, which is access in and out of the farm site, and um, also um, you know, do that in a way that is, um, that is appropriate and, and um, recognizing the, the you know, sort of interests of the of others. Um, the reason we are here this evening is that this process has essentially accelerated our timeline. And so we felt it was important, and the board felt it was important, that if the, there are discussions taking place with regard to changes in this area, that we at least put in some thoughts to be considered um, by the um, various um, committees with regard to how any change in the cut of the wall, for example, would be able to serve multiple interests, both that of readdressing the, the flow of this work of this of this intersection and also the our access to and from the farm site. So we're really trying to kill two birds with one stone here. Could you do me a favor, Clint, and run your slides backwards? There was there was one slide early on in the presentation that showed a whole cluster of of solutions that you looked at and, and, and discarded for for and you sort of went the through round, that quick roundabout itself? Yeah, the, the, the yeah, really early in the about six. Where the is the committee doing that? No, that's uh, that one. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? The one we yeah. did very much outside the entrance in some area. Yeah, there it is. What was, what was, just out of curiosity, what was wrong with six? One of the problems with six was that. The, the concern was cars were going to, there wasn't a, a consistent speed in turning of the car. You kind of have to go, turn a little bit, go straight, turn a little bit more. That it was, it was somewhat awkward. It was somewhat to, awkward. To navigate, and the fact that there aren't, a roundabout is not a common thing in the Weston area or any of the adjacent towns. There's a few here and there, but the idea was to try to build one in a circular format that matches where they are elsewhere. It's, so that the few you might encounter elsewhere, you, you, there's some similarity. But yeah, we did look at trying to leave the existing island where it is, essentially, and, and do a more egg-shaped or you know, oblong type. And the, the concern just was that it would be a little more confusing and it just wouldn't solve the, the goals of the project. But that was, a, was that a, Statistical concern, or was that was that a, 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 an intuitive concern? The reason why I'm asking is because with six, you can leave the driveway exactly where it is. The land six driveway can stay just exactly where it is. One of the concern, one of the other concerns, is that six doesn't slow cars down in every direction because there are still some straight shoots, almost like exit ramps. That, that really don't require you to, to go under 40 or 45. So it, it doesn't meet that goal of trying to slow everyone down at this intersection. But was for the was for the, the, the one that that looks like the one that you guys wound up with yes. diagrammatically. Yes. But you're still coming around that you're still coming around that sweep on Wellesley Street. You, you know, it, it, it's it's there's a little bump in it, but but it's it's still a fairly straight shot through there. So it is, is, the, is the statistical difference in terms of speed that great because of that little bump? What is the statistical difference in speed? I would say it's going to be about double the speed under six as uh, it would be four. Again, is that, 
is that borne out by studies or is that just your intuitive thought? Because that? six in terms of Wellesley Street southbound going toward Alphabet Lane, it's basically the same alignment as it, as it is now. And I think that the, the traffic sure. speeds were studied. And I think the 85% the of the cars were going 38 miles an hour or less. Well, the so only, there was the only some going faster. But the only difference that's is the, similar. the traffic calming measure that leads up to it. In other words, the, there's a narrowing of the road there that's um, so presumably slows people down. Would you not do that same think, sort of thing? I don't think it's going to slow them down nearly as much as forcing them to actually turn and navigate through a, a roadway mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than just, you know, there's a little shoot there you're sending them through, but it's I agree still a straight it, shot through but, there. But the, um, the, uh, the little triangle to, on the right side of number four, you know, which you're talking about having it so that it, it could be a pedestrian walkway, mm -hmm. that, you know, if we keep the driveway where it is, then that could be, that triangle could be altered to accommodate that. Yes. All right, and it still doesn't deal with the pedestrian. You have to additionally deal with pedestrian traffic. Right, it, it, that still could be a crossing location, but the speed of the cars in the southbound direction is going to be much higher than it would be otherwise. Still, still keeping the number four, keeping your circle, not, not number six. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you would, uh, well, were you guys completely dismissive of keeping the driveway where it is? It appeared to us to be a necessary trade-off of the roundabout alignment and the desire to have a crosswalk it works where the Splitter works. Island is. But I mean, the so Lansing driveway works beautifully where it is. Like you just, you but it doesn't work with a crosswalk. I know, it doesn't work with the roundabout. Yeah. Well, you know, what if it was, if it went directly into the roundabout? So it, with a stop sign, so it becomes, you come up to that roundabout and stop. Too far over the way. The, I think the biggest concern with that is, is the fact that, so the driveway would be to the left of the of dotted, of where in the circle. Yeah. I think the biggest concern with that was that when you, if you're entering, you're leaving Landsafe, you're going into the roundabout, you're looking left for traffic, you see a gap, you go. You're not necessarily looking to the right to expect that there could be somebody crossing there might not be all that frequent, but I think that's the biggest concern. As you're looking left, you see the opening, you go. You may not think to look to your right that there's somebody crossing. Oh, um, if, if you're making a right turn. Yeah. Right. So you need more space between that and the crosswalk. We raised that same question. And I, they told me two things about that. One was that if you're on Newton Street coming into the roundabout, you're looking left. If somebody's coming out of the landscape driveway right on the round, on the circle and pulls out because they see the same gap, you could create an you know, opportunity for a collision right there in the middle of the roundabout. Second thing they said to me is that in order to solve that problem, they need to increase the diameter of the circle so that everybody is entering on a <coughs> more shallower angle, essentially, and that Landsake's driveway ends up becoming effectively a fourth spoke on that wheel instead of a third right. spoke. And that presumably would have significant impact on the, on the walls as they are currently If it has set to up. be a circle. But if it has to be a circle. That, that, that's, what, that's what they It could be a fourth spoke coming in and not, have, not, not allowing a right turn. But they have to go around the round, roundabout to go in that direction on Wellesley. So it's not a right turn situation. There's certainly plenty of those kind of things. I'm not a traffic planner, but so that's what they you do. You mean you, everyone would have to enter the circle? Yeah. You couldn't go right there. I can think right. of an example. Everyone, where everyone now has to enter right the circle. Just exactly that, where there are five spokes coming into the circle. And it works beautifully. I've never seen anybody. Yeah. I think from from talking with Ed, the, the one challenge to that would be is that for deliveries, it puts them further away from the road that they're trying to get to the truck delivery. That's just uh, that, that's a year. Uh, if, if we continue to use the current, well, if if the driveway was at the circle, 
Uh, right, because because then when the time comes to finally move out of the Mosher Danforth driveway, we have to figure some other way to connect people in to our farm road system in a way that does not have farm delivery and other delivery trucks going right through the area where there's you know kids being dropped off. To the the farm like stand. That. You could you could you could grab that. That comes off. Doesn't that come off the back of the parking area? Um, I'd be happy to um, talk about it more in length. I know that this is not quite, but but um, effectively the problem that, that creates is that you have deliveries going through the middle of a highly uh, congested area with kids and programmatic stuff. So going schedule them when they're not there. Have, it's have, twice or have a place detail. Need be. I mean, you can schedule them, right? Uh, you'd be surprised at how hard it is to schedule deliveries. But you have to have people to unload stuff. Yes, we do. So there is some scheduling that takes place. Yes, although it's oftentimes we'll be there, you know, in a four-hour window, and we find out about it when we pull in the driveway. Look, this is what it sounds like to me: is that early on the decision was made that we would cut through the stone walk, the long stretch of the stone wall. Am I right? Yes. What? I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, that early on the decision was made. We're going to have to cut through this walk. Period. End of the story. So that all these designs have sort of been predicated on that assumption. So how about if someone actually said, "No, this is an immutable object. We may not cut through this wall." So no, let's any work of those with, options. Yeah. So let's work with what we've got. What would be the optimum way of preserving the wall because the town wants that stretch preserved? Mm -hmm. So I bet you, not being an architect, graphic designer, or anything else. There are some fairly good solutions. As far as the delivery truck coming twice a year and it being a huge problem with running over children, what? I, I just I think that it, you can do a lot with um, delivery trucks. You are the you are the purchaser of these goods. So sure, I appreciate what you're need. saying. I'm also mindful that if we remain to have the only driveway be the current driveway, and we do have to move out of the Mosier driveway then all of a sudden every delivery truck that we receive comes through our parking lot, not simply the articulated tractor trailer. So I just want to make sure that I'm yeah. being clear about that. So so that's oftentimes daily, many sometimes several per day deliveries, and they're not simply the big tractor trailers that come twice right. or they're four times a year. Type things or they're, yeah, yeah, they're right. you know, larger box truck kinds of mm -hmm. deliveries, state trucks, you know, that kind of thing. So I, yeah. it, it, it certainly would because, the, you know, our, our intent is to eventually get our deliveries out of the driveway that, that the Mosher family and mm -hmm. the Danforth family have this graciously allowed us to use. Yeah. And um, so if so, that could have the, the effect, the unintended consequence of driving every delivery through the middle of the parking lot. You have on average well, you'd be doing that with You'd be doing that with that configuration anyway. Right now, aren't you? Um, no, 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 because right now they all come down the, the driver motor, the motor drive, driveway. Oh, really? So it's more than just two large or four That's large correct. trucks a year. You have constant traffic down there. That's, we have regular traffic down the driveway. And by constant, how many trucks would you have? Uh, it depends certainly on the season and the, and the, and the, um, and the week, but you know, we get, routinely we get at least a delivery per day. A, at least one. At least one, okay. and it's oftentimes that, that doesn't seem to be hugely burdensome. I, I, I maybe you <laughs> probably should talk with the Mosher's and Danforths about that too. No, no. I, I, I think you need to be out of the Mosher's and Danforths property. I mean, but I'm thinking that if all deliveries had to come in through the current opening in the wall, that one delivery a day just doesn't sound that Well, there, there are many days when there are several. Right. And, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, certainly if the committee makes a decision that at this point there's not a desire to make changes to that wall, we will find solutions that work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly here to be cooperative, but um, in the circumstance that the, in, in the circumstance that the that the um, rotary roundabout goes through, and there is a decision to make a cut, simply interesting. Work asked if you would consider some of the issues that we encounter as a business when we're trying to operate on that site with the current configuration. But 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 we ask you in, in turn. That we don't want to be uncooperative either. Mm -hmm. But. but well, again, what we're balancing is an expressed desire of the people who elected us 
to um, try and maintain as much as possible the, the key parts of the town that, that people perceive to find its character. Sure. This is it. This is ground zero. Yeah. So to, 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 to consider a change that would, that would alter that image significantly is something that we kind of really take seriously and, and consider very carefully. Mm -hmm. Think in terms of that visual, that long stone, unbroken stone wall, mm -hmm. the, uh, the fields, the pastoral view behind it, you know, as something that many people, I mean, certainly anyone who's driving their kids to school, see uh, every day in, in the West End. And it's, really, it's, 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 a, it's an important viewscape. There's no argument for me about that and, at all. And it makes you guys look better, too. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I mean, and what we have up there only shows, you know, if the, the driveway going into the parking lot, you're talking there would be additional driveway that would then go the opposite direction to go to the back of the property. And that's that would be, uh, I just can't see how that would be positive thing for you, uh, both in terms of viewscape as well as in terms of the productive production of that of that field. Well, there's there's no question that um, gravel grows a lot fewer tomatoes than does farm fields. And they taste funny. And they taste funny. And they're and they're gritty too. A little chewy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, given the constraints of the site. Um, we're trying to identify the solutions that make that um, obviously the least impactful and the most productive for us. Um, the reason we're here, obviously, is because this proposal is, is moving that, that conversation forward um, probably a little faster than I would like, simply because we um, want to be able to consider the various range of, of issues that impact that, that location. And for me, what's very important is that we um, keep track of, of how we're moving on that site and, and therefore the implications that that has for safety and for programmatic and for cultivation and all the other ways in which and, and aesthetics that that um, you know that that um, we're trying to pay attention to. So um, I, I'm I'm mindful that that uh, you know it may be a suboptimal solution, but if the if the uh, proposal goes through and that cut does um, go into the wall in that location, I'd like to at least be considered as a as a part of the overall solution for that. Sure. Understood. Uh, sure. Um, I feel like we're talking in circles and the uh, <laughs> the we, I think we've lost sight of the fact that the, the driveway is being moved not for the four trucks a year but for every single car that has to enter that place. And if that doesn't work, then what's the alternative? And if there isn't an alternative, then, then I don't know what we're talking about. So I, I feel like um, unless they can, unless you can come back with another alternative where that driveway would work with the roundabout and not cut through the field as it currently does. Um, well, I think this is where we are. What we would prefer is to leave the driveway where it is. Right, but if, if we, if that, and if that works with the roundabout, well, fine. Right. If, 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 if we can't, then we, then we have to look more carefully at what the impacts are on the relocation. Right. I, you know, I, my first my first reaction is that the, that, the, that widening the driveway to make it comfortable for for two to four uh, tractor trailers a year, probably there may be another way around that, so that we don't have to do that. We can minimize the width of the cut. We can also try and understand better the topographical changes that would have to occur in, in relation to the new driveway so that we see how it actually works for the land. I mean, those are, those are going to be considerations that we have to, to take a look at, but we don't have enough information to be able to do that yet. Right. That's, I mean, I'd like to know if there is an option to have the driveway right at the roundabout or some other place. Um, I don't think there's a, some other place. I think we've looked, looked at yeah. all those places. Well, either where it is or, or at the roundabout. Right here. 
it could be at the roundabout if the existing break was relocated a little bit to the south. But I don't believe that solves the delivery problem. Not for the size of the truck, but the fact that the truck has to get to the lower right or to the, to the lower right of that screen somehow <coughs> through, the, through the fields. One way or the other, if it's, it's a road up by the wall or a road further back, you've got to have a, a path there. Well, I, I was a Lansing board member for over 20 years, so um, I, I have a little bit of a sense of how how it's laid out, how the 40 acre feels laid out. And I, I, can, I can think of, and in fact I've walked it with this exact, having this exact discussion about how, how, you, how the road system might work internally if the, if the uh, Mosher driveway was cut off. And I think there may be ways to do it, um, but just based on that discussion. Um, that, had that discussion several years ago. I don't think we have to, the, the point is we don't have to solve the global problems of the, you know, of the whole, that whole site to try and figure out whether you know what the implications are for the for the cut in the in the stone wall. Um, so some things I think can be worked out on another level at another time. The question is what what we what, what on earth we have we can we can say about this now that that makes any sense because. Um, well, I for one want to support the roundabout. Okay. I, I think that it's the right way to go for that intersection. And I've been part of that discussion, talking about this and from the first committee that we explored a lot of changes, and then other committees all came to the same agreement. You know, and I think that that's uh, the right way to go for the intersection. I also support the change in, in School Street, Wellesley Street intersection that you had mentioned up here too. I think that that's a much safer way of, of the, of, for that intersection to exist. Your visuals are, are going to be safer. You're going to be able to see a lot farther. Uh, it's going to be much more comfortable to be able to look, especially coming off Wilson Street up uh, School Street. So this gets my endorsement. I'm qualified. Um, what is this? This being the roundabout and the Wellesley Street, School Street intersection. The Lansing Farm we're going to have to work with, I guess, a little more, you know, you know back to scratching your head with a pencil or something, I guess, to make, to make that work. Um, I, I am not at all in favor of what you're showing there is moving that, that driveway there. I just don't think it's a great idea at all. Well, there's nothing to say that the that this break in the wall has to be there directly from a crosswalk. If the driveway was over here and you wanted only one break, you would just have to zigzag a little bit, walking over and then in. You don't. It doesn't have to be a straight line right. from the crosswalk into. Those are, that those are, there are details there that can be worked out. I'm, I'm convinced. So, anyway, that, I've said my piece. already doing it up at the case in that see the driveway coming yeah. out there that's, that's doing exactly the same thing at that end of the roundabout. Does that make it it spoke? Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> well I think that one of the reasons that it was even considered at all is the fact that most of the traffic to Landsake is not at the same time as rush hour traffic. True. There are you know, some, maybe as, as we agree or disagree, but yeah, typically you're not having a lot of cars coming in and out of there at the same time. Yes. School yes. is yes. drop off time at, at field or country or woodland or pickup time. Yes. Well, 
where the three main you know, arteries would be yields, these would be stop signs. And, you know. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, I, th I think we have. It. I mean, um, we're, we we need to do some some more work ourselves on this as as it goes forward. Uh, so we'll see how things turn out at, at town meeting and take and take it from there. Um, Are you looking for something specific from us tonight? Well, I, I think that our only if if you were to change it, I think whatever you do is the brakes will be smaller and the, the alterations will be smaller. So I would expect any impacts to the project cost to be in the positive direction rather than in the, the more expensive direction. I mean, personally, Steve, we can Steve from the Mr. Fogg is not still here. We, yeah. Personally, we, we can express. Uh, if you're talking about more breaks or something that would add costs, that would be concerned. But I think what you're talking about would probably reduce costs. I mean, it's less less changes to the wall. Our mandate here is the openings of the stone wall. And that's it. I mean, and the impacts associated with those. Other than that, it becomes. You know, personal opinion. David's expressed his, and Sue's agreed with him. Um, but in terms of our ma mandate, regulatory mandate, I think we're sort of we're still saying it needs more work. We'll have to come back, come back and look at it after after town meetings made its decision. Thank you. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So I'll either be returning at some point or this will not be an issue anymore, right? Well, I guess the, the, the use of the private driveway will come back at some point in some shape. It, it, it will in some shape, I'm sure. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.